This may not look like much right now, but this is the best proof my linear particle accelerator worked. Let me explain. Hello and welcome. On the previous video, I tried to build a linear drift two particle accelerator or LINAC. Using the original design, I put together a vacuum chamber and accelerating tubes, and I was just about to test the detection method for quantifying my progress when a simple mistake destroyed my drift tube and some parts made of glass. I really wanted to see this project succeed, and I was uh, not about to let a few drops of blood and some broken glass get in the way. Thanks to your comment, I replaced the broken parts, rethink some uh, design, and restarted. First, my garage needed some serious cleaning, and I have to admit, it is a lot easier to find tools and equipment, and a lot more comfortable to work in. Since winter is approaching, and I was going to spend long hours in this garage, I insulated it the best I could. When trying different uh, roughing pump and changing oil during a moment of inattention, I accidentally connected the exhaust of the pump instead of the suction. These vacuum pumps can be used as compressors, so it didn't take long for the pressure to rise and shatter the weaker glass. Thankfully, the turbo molecular pump was not running since uh, I had just turned on the roughing pump. Hey, we all do dumb shit sometimes, right? A very dumb mistakes indeed. If this happened at work, it would be labeled a mispositioning event. Anyway, I cleaned up uh, all the parts, the main tube, valve, and fittings, replaced the viewport, and the hot cathode gauge, replaced the quadrupole for the mass spectrometer, I took the turbo pump apart to clean it and make sure nothing got in. It seemed fine and uh, spinned freely. I was eventually able to take it down a 10 minus 7 tour. My uh, original choice for the ion source was uh, very homemade and I wanted a bit more efficient and controllable output. So I found this uh, sputtering gun. It runs on a few thousand volts and push out a nice stream of ions. Since I will need to degas the chamber to achieve lower pressure, I install this uh, heater to help getting rid of uh, water pressure. I also install some insulation for a more uniform heating. Believe it or not, water is the main source of contamination in high vacuum application and the mass spectrum confirms it. Speaking of the vacuum, let me uh, take this opportunity to talk about the mean free path. You see, the air we breathe at ground level is full of molecules of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, argon, etc. These molecules are moving around freely until they bump into each other. The mean free path is the average distance these molecules can travel before heating another one. At atmospheric pressure, roughly 760 torr, this distance is about 65 nanometers, or slightly smaller than the COVID virus. This roughing pump can reach roughly 10 minus 3 torr, or 0 0.001 torr. At this pressure, the mean free path is already 1 centimeter. Now, air behaves like a fluid at least down to this uh, roughing pump pressure. The reason this type of pumps cannot drop the pressure any lower has to do with the motion of the air molecule no longer behaving like a fluid. Below about 10 minus 3 torr, the air molecules are too far apart from each other to move like a fluid and will not move together like a fan pushing air on one side of the room, for example. In short, we have to wait for a molecule to randomly bump their way to us to be captured and moved out of the chamber. So, larger openings are always better for low pressure. Of course, this is a simplified animation, but it gives a good idea for what's going on. If I want to be sure that particle can travel the whole length of the tube, which is about a meter and a half or 60 inches, I have to make sure the pressure matches the mean free path for ions to travel without being deflected. And that's about a pressure of 10 to minus 5 to 10 to minus 6 torr. And of course, the lower the better. For detecting the ion, I choose a simple electrometer. you probably already seen his grandfather, the electroscope. The gold foil is repaired when electric charges are present. And this simple device helped in many early experiments with electricity, cosmic ray, and radioactivity. This modern version can detect and amplify electric current in the Pico range, hence its name. A simple isolated electrode allowed the charged particle heating it to be discharged to ground through the electrometer, and the passage of these charges can be measured. 
Very simple and reliable device. The output can even be monitored on a computer using these modules. I've used these uh, Weider technology modules on the power plant video. I really like these very useful and versatile module. They can be used for many applications. No, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm just happy with the device that works. That's all. I created this interface to monitor the high voltage from the ion power supply here. The pressure from both vacuum gauge is displayed here and here. And my uh, detection electrometer current in pico amp is here. I can even set up the temperature for the heater with the PI data object window and the computer does the regulating. After all this, I needed a baseline to make sure things were working correctly and I could even detect anything. And if not, I'll turn this contraption into another fusor. So with no drift tube inside the chamber, I reached the lower 10 minus six door after degassing when I found a small air leak. You can see the nitrogen peak here. Now I can flush with uh, helium. That's a large peak at mass four right there. Turn on the ion gun, keeping an eye on the voltage here. Now look at the electrometer. If I increase the uh, voltage at the ion source, I can immediately see the corresponding increased signal from the detector. But if the pressure rises beyond the mean free path, I can no longer detect anything. Since the chamber is grounded and there is no electrical connection between detector and source, this can only mean one thing, a successful detection. Helium ions or alpha particle made it all the way to the detector and the deposited charge was detected and it looks like a thousand volt increase yielded 2.5 times 10 to minus 11 amps higher reading on the detector. I can now add a data window and directly display my calibrated value in kilo electrovolts or kev. So a smaller chamber would work at a higher pressure but the drift tube size dictates the frequency to use for acceleration. Let's take a look at this uh, equation for calculating the length of the drift tube. L is the length in meter. V is the speed in meter per second at the entrance of the drift tube. And T is the period of the frequency or one over hertz. The initial speed is driven by the ion source voltage and using the equation for a charged particle in an electric field, we can use with V the speed in meters per second Q the charge in coulomb for the alpha particle. This is two times 10 to minus 19 coulomb V the initial voltage and volt and M the mass of the helium nucleus, which is 6.64 times 10 to minus 27 kilogram. We already know the kinetic energy equation and the conversion from joule to electrovolt. All of these formula are easily available online, but uh, let me recommend the uh, YouTube channel for the love of physics and the cyclotron video series, both very instructive and well taught. For simplicity, I put all these equations in an Excel spreadsheet so we can directly see the best option with the size and power available. The initial ion gun DC supplied voltage input goes here. The drift tube applied power frequency is here and it's RF voltage available here. The length of each tube is displayed in this column in centimeters and the total length is in uh, this column. Finally, the uh, alpha particle maximum achievable energy in KEV is shown here. For example, if I use a 2000 volt input voltage for the source, that would bring the alpha to a 2.5 KEV initial theoretical energy, applying a 12,000 volt accelerating voltage to the tube under a 4 megahertz frequency, for example, would require five to six tubes to stay within the chamber size. And the alpha particle would exit the six tube with a calculated energy of 92.38 KEV. Increasing the frequency has no effect on the final energy, but reduces the size of the accelerator. Increasing the tube's voltage is the only way to reach higher energy. Lawrence and Sloan at Berkeley were able to accelerate mercury ion to 1.25 MeV using 30 drift tube under 42,000 volts and 10 megahertz using a 50,000 watt generator. I don't have anywhere near that kind of power and my light bill is already high enough. But after much searching and thanks to your advice and comment, I found this unit. This is an RF power generator for testing light bulbs, believe it or not, and it can provide 15,000 volts up to 500 kilohertz. Higher voltage and frequency exist, but that would require a Faraday cage to prevent excessive RF and get a visit from the FCC.
Just because I have a radio license doesn't mean I can blast the area with high power RF. And this project is already expensive enough. Anyway, if I use these number in my Excel sheet here, I uh, could theoretically reach about 40 kilo electrovolt using only two drift tube at 34.71 centimeter and about one meter long. This turned out to be uh, more complicated than uh, physically possible and I only used one tube. So let's get this a run and see what we get. I reached an acceptable pressure of about three times 10 to the minus five tor or a mean free path over five meters long. The iron gun voltage indicates 1.9 kV and the RF power is at about 25%. The detected alpha particle energy is just under 10 keV, which is five times more than the 2 kV from the uh, ion source. So there, we made it, right? Okay, hold on, these could be interferences. This unit is rated for 15,000 volts to ground in AC. That means it goes from minus 15,000 to positive 15,000. The power here indicate about 25% of that or an AC voltage, 25% of the full 30,000 volt swing, which is 7,500 volt. Putting this number in my Excel calculator, we should get 11.86 keV for max energy after a first drift tube. After some inevitable losses, it looks like it works out. Now, obviously, if the pressure is too high, no ion can possibly reach the detector and generate a signal. And if I do get a signal, that would mean some sort of interference or some kind of bad ground. Okay, let's set up the condition to check for that. Here, the pressure is about one times 10 to minus four. So the mean free path is about one meter, too short for particles to reach the detector. And raising the power above 40% should not and did not generate any detection as expected. Okay, cool. Also, if a detection is made with the RF on at a low enough pressure with no ion source voltage, then something else must be wrong. And let's check this. Nope, the pressure is good, 3 to minus 5, and the ion voltage is off. Raising the RF power again at 244% did not generate any signal from the detector. Only when all three conditions are met, low enough vacuum, high voltage applied to the uh, ion source, and RF power on, do I get a signal from the detector and uh, the appropriate energy. So this seems to work fine, and uh, it looks like the uh, laws of physics were not violated here. Tuning the RF power supply is tedious and does mess with the PC beyond a few watts of Apple power. But I'm very happy with these results. I welcome scrutiny, constructive criticism, questions, and comments. Now this project is really a proof of concept, and the only metric that really separates it from being able to generate nuclear reaction is the power supply. A lot of radio frequency radiation were emitted during this project, but none were ionizing radiations. Notice the area radiation monitor here never indicated a higher background. So this device is only dangerous to some electronics and only in very close proximity to the tube itself. As promised, I'll modify this uh, thing to make another fusor and burn up uh, the remaining deuterium I have. As always, I'll try to bring something new and interesting, so stay tuned for another first. Thanks for watching. Damn it!